report. So we're going to go ahead and bring up the other report. And Okay, so right here we have the um, My Home Sleep Study, which is the type two. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna let me back up. I, one more point I got to make. So technically, this is my. <clears throat> excuse me. One more point I have to make. This right here is my home sleep test, right? It's a type two. However, this is a type two completely blown up on every level. What what a typical type two will look like is this. This is all you need for a typical type 2. So you would just have one channel of sleep or brain activity up here. You have snoring, you have uh, SpO2, EKG, uh, respiratory effort belts. Um, it's basically uh, seven channels of whatever. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, we're not counting the sum, and then SpO2, seven. There's our seven, that's a type two. Um, obviously we're not doing that. We are taking it to a completely different level. Uh, we're going, that's what we're doing. So that is how we are different. Um, I get the question a lot about the differences between the two. Ours is a type two home sleep test done just as far out as you absolutely can. Okay, got that out of the way. All right, back to the point. So. Here we have the type four home sleep test. And then right here we have my version of the type two home sleep test. Now I haven't gone through and put into, there's no doctor's name. Some of these I have to autofill, but <clears throat> I just grabbed them from the report or from the raw data. So um, this is a front page essentially of our report. And you can see this is just a one pager for the type four. Um, what it tells us is uh, just the duration um, gives us this range, kind of a generic, you know, normal range, borderline, or severe. And what they're saying is that there's an AHI of 20 and an RI, respiratory index, of 22. Um, and so we don't actually have the actual sleep time because it just considers the entire recording time as sleep time. Uh, it, it, if an event is marked or not marked, it just counts the entire thing. Um, whereas with my type two, what it, we do is we obviously we take out all the sleep time. So you can see right here, there's all this recording time, which is going to match up with the other one. Uh, durations, we have seven hours, 42. Whoops. And um, yeah, it should be, it's like seven hours. Uh, it's about the same. Oh, actually, you know what? It should, it'll be different because the other one was recording longer and I cropped the end of it. So it's going to be even more down. But you can see that the total sleep time is actually much less. So we just take this number and divide it by um, 60 and we'd find out how many hours of sleep there was. Uh, we can see, but what we can look here and say, well, sleep efficiency was 51% of the time um, he was asleep of all that. Uh, also gives us REM latency. Uh, here's our AHI. We have the REM AHI, which is actually pretty close to the AHI. So it does not appear there was any REM specific component. Um, you can see that the RDI was higher because this incorporates RERAs, respiratory effort related arousals. Um, and that's just the front page and we already have more information than, than this. So if we were to just scroll down, we can see uh, all the stages, how it's broken down, N1, N2, N3, and REM sleep, how much of the percentage of total sleep time uh, you can figure out, you know, if you're getting the, the proper amount of each stage of sleep. Here we have central apneas, mixed, obstructive, hypopneas, all that stuff. We have it broken down by supine versus non-supine. Um, he didn't sleep much on his back. Um, where was that? He didn't sleep much on his back and um, so total time in this position, you know, he was about, you know, a little over an hour. And then on his right side, he was complete on his right side practically the entire night. But you can see that while he was on his back, his RDI was fairly similar to what it was on his right side statistically. You know, it looks like it's, it's uh, lower.
we can see right here we have our average heart rate during wake, average heart rate during non-REM, average heart rate during REM. The other one just gives you average heart rate because it doesn't know REM versus non-REM. Here we have um, a heart rate with a hypnogram of the entire night. Um, he actually didn't have any limb movements, so we didn't see any of that stuff. Um, here's the oximetry based on, you know, also comparing it to the hypnogram. Hypnogram is just uh, the stage of sleep you're in during the night. So you can see there's a lot of desaturations that are associated with these, these red periods here. The red is um, REM sleep. And over here you can see there's some more. And here we have an all-night hypnogram, uh, kind of pulling everything together. So here's body position. You can see how he's moving, mostly on his right side, which is the RS4. Uh, we see obstructive apneas all throughout here, with some hypopneas mixed in, some rheras mixed in. So all these rheras, none of those would even be counted, um, or I'm sorry, none of them are counted at all with the uh, type 4 test. It's just simply unable to detect them. So you can see you get a whole lot more detail uh, out of our test when compared to the other. So here we have respiratory events based on stage and body position. So non-REM, he didn't have any REM supine sleep, so that's zero. REM non-supine, um, so REM, that's REM on his side. He has an index, it's an overall index incorporating everything of that. 75.88, uh, non-REM supine, so anything other than REM that was sleep on his back, and then non-REM. So anything not REM, not on his back. You can see statistically, they're all pretty much ballpark. Um, so like I said, what this means is pretty much CPAP is about the only option. He's pretty severe. So that takes us to one of the more important things is the overall AHI is listed. He's, he's, that's severe. That's severe in any doctor's book. 30 is typically severe at 30 and above. And he is topping that out like nobody's business. He has a low SpO2 of... Uh, 78. So you see this AHI 57, this AHI is showing 20. Um, so you can see where someone who is uh, less severe or less clear than my friend here, um, they could be in a world of trouble. Like, What if this shows that there's an AHI of 5 on a type 4 test, whereas mine sh you know, shows that it's actually higher, um, which I think you can see now that mine is more accurate. This type 2 is more accurate if you add EEG. Um, he could run into a problem where he's not being treated for a sleep disorder that he has. And so what we see, you know, just through my forum, um, just through experience working in the field, we see that this actually happens quite a bit where people have, um, some people only have RERAs, and so those aren't treated by Medicare. And so typically other insurances will follow this and you won't get treated your hosed. And you can see that this is kind of true right here where the rears are a little bit higher, though this isn't a great example of that. This is just a great illustration that looking at this data with this few channels will yield you this result. Not much information. You don't have many channels. You're not going to get much information. Whereas if you look at this with many channels, you're going to get a report here with a lot of information. And so with, with home sleep testing uh, increasing as it is, and probably as it should be, um, what you're seeing is testing is actually being substituted for a much, uh, a poorer quality test, which is what you know insurance companies are going for, the type four. Whereas a type two, when you blow it up, like this and use all the parameters, you can actually get pretty good results for a much cheaper price, but still have results that are accurate. Unfortunately, they're not doing that at this point. Um, but hopefully, you know, hopefully that'll change.